Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with Doctor Who. Last time on Doctor Who, we had Under the Lake, part one of a two-parter, where the Doctor and Clara found an underwater base where uh, there were ghosts and there was an alien ship, and then they figured out that the alien ship had a passenger, and then he wanted to uh, call his buddies, so he was killing people because they became a signal as ghosts, and then the Doctor went back in time so that he could figure out uh, what happened when the spaceship landed. But then at the end there was a, there was a cliffhanger where uh, it seemed the Doctor had died in the past and he was a ghost. So yeah. And like I said, it was part one of a two-parter. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all pretty interesting. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. We should go ahead and see what part two of this has to offer. Here we go. But you can't find Beethoven anywhere. No one's heard of him. Not even his family have any idea who the time traveler is talking about. This didn't happen, by the way. Okay. I was gonna say, are you Beethoven? I'm Beethoven. The bootstrap paradox. Google it. Hmm. <laughs> he brought all of his Beethoven sheet music for Ludwig to sign. And he gets them published. Here so. comes Beethoven. Right. And history continues barely a feather ruffled but this didn't happen he's just trying to do an example oh god what's happening my question is this who put those notes and phrases together <laughs> oh and that's really capaldi doing that isn't it oh i love this I love this underscore. I'm gonna start using this for my end theme. This is so much better than the real one. Oh, it completes it. I used to be in military intelligence. I was demoted for dangling a colleague out of a window. In anger? Hmm. Is there another way to dangle someone out of a window? <laughs> what year are we in? 1980. Wow. So pre Harold Saxon, pre the Minister of War, pre the moon exploding, the big bat coming out. The Minister of War? Yeah. No. Yep. Never mind. I Spoilers. I'll find out soon enough. It's him, that's the ghost from the drum. <laughs> oh. The first Mark. ghost. Oh. It's the Fisher King. He and his armies the invaded Fisher King. and enslaved us. It's a list of all our names. Hmm. And when he finishes, he just goes back to the beginning again, over and over. That's it. Another ghost has appeared. What? Who? Someone died. Doctor. Turned it for FaceTime. It's you. Spoilers. I have to die. No. You can change things. I can't. I mean... Even the tiniest change. And you can stop it happening to you. I'll do what I can. But the future has already happened. We've just met the Undertaker and he's still alive. Hmm. I mean, you don't know necessarily that you died, just that a ghost appears. Oh god. Like, you don't know the full situation. It's the same thing I argue in Merlin. When they talk about visions. Ah, oh, crap. The first imprint. And there goes the Fisher King. So. Also, he has a phone in there me. now. You've got a better view than me. Oh. That's the Fisher King. He's gonna be right there. Ah. Your ghost was saying that's the order in which people are going to die, isn't it? I mean, I've only just figured that out, but you knew that all along. Yeah, he you? did. Maybe she stood a chance. Yeah, but you didn't try very hard to stop her, though, did you? It was almost like you wanted to test your theory. So who's next? Clara. Yeah. Oh, shit. You wouldn't save her. This isn't about saving me. I'm a dead man walking. I'm changing history to save Clara. 
damn. It's always rough, man. It's weird that, you know, it's in order, but it doesn't it doesn't matter with the timeline. But then why would the doctor show up? I'm gonna go back to the base. I'm gonna save Clara because that's what I do. And I don't see anyone here who's gonna stop me. <sighs> she doesn't want to. Nope. The TARDIS will stop you. She's not going back. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> nope. I like that the doctor immediately tackled him. Me? Uh, Cass wouldn't let me go inside. That's why the ghosts didn't hurt you when they had the chance, because the message isn't inside you. Uh, yes, I suppose that makes sense. So you can get the phone back. What? Oh, he can go. Okay. What, what the fuck are you saying? She's right. No! Neither of you can get it back. It's unfortunate, but yeah. What? What is it? What did she say? It doesn't matter. Uh. Please. She said to ask you whether traveling with the doctor changed you, or were you always having to put other people's lives at risk? Damn. You're just willing to do it because she's hot. Has to be done. Man, they're both getting shit this episode. Well, there you go. I need more time. My ghosts will make more ghosts. Enough to bring an armada. Fucking why? To wake me from my sleep. Uh oh. He's waking up in there. We will drain the oceans and put the humans in chains. This world is oh, fucking protected you will. by me. He knows the doctor. I know that look. I do that look. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. But we stick together. It is a good thing she can read lips. Which, if she can read lips, why does she need the guy to do the sign? Yes. Yes. Now, neither of them should die because Clara's next. Idiot. Oh, but yeah. She can't hear you. Bah. She can't hear that. She can't hear this guy dragging an axe. Oh. Duh. Now I'm an idiot. <laughs> Jeez. I can't believe how fucking stupid I was. Of course she can't. She can't hear anything. She's deaf. I can't believe I fell for the same thing that Clara did, like, a minute before. Ah. Oh. Tough. Oh, she, yeah. Dodge. Yeah. The message will never contaminate my friends. No one will die. No one is coming to save you. How? That's the thing about knowing you're going to die. I've got nothing left to lose. Ooh. Yeah. Wait. What if he's in the box? He took the thing. Is it gonna explode? Oh 
He's the cause. It's it. This is the bootstrap paradox. It's the flood. The echelon circuit has been activated. Please stow any hand luggage and prepare for departure. Oh God. So the TARDIS is going back. The TARDIS is going back, and he's he's in there, isn't he? Did that kill him? <laughs> He's been in there for a hundred years. Follow me. Going in there. Ah, that's where the doctor's ghost is. Wow. So what was it? Your ghost? A hologram. Like the one we made of you to lure the ghosts into the Faraday cage. Ah, he Shaun played that. Intelligence. Lun, will you translate something to Cass for me? Of course. Tell her that you're in love with her and that you always have been. So what? Tell her there's no point in wasting time. Because things happen and then it's too late. Aww. Tell her I wish someone had given me that advice. Aww. Oh god, no. I was just passing on what he said. Please, <laughs> don't do See, it can make a difference at least. The Fisher King had been dead for 150 years before we even got here. Yeah. But once I went back, I became part of events. Time happened as it did. But here's the thing. I programmed my ghost to say them because that's what my ghost had said. And the only reason that I created my ghost hologram in the first place was because I saw it here. I was reverse engineering the narrative. Okay, yeah. that's still pretty smart. When did I first have those ideas, Clara? It's a bootstrap paradox. It must have been... Wow. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Who composed Beethoven's Fifth? Oh! Oh! That was really cool, actually. Just ended up being a bootstrap paradox. Alrighty, that is episode four. You know, I have to say that was that was really fun actually. I like how that all resolved. So Oh man oh man. Okay, who the voice of the Fisher King? Do I recognize him? No, I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't think so. Um, all right. Man, you know, I kind of want them to use the, uh, I kind of want the, them to use the rock and roll theme, like, for the rest of <laughs> Capaldi's run, honestly. Because, uh, you know, the normal theme, the normal theme is okay. You know, it's, it's not their greatest version of the theme song, but... I, I think it's definitely enhanced by uh, Capaldi on the guitar. Which, now, I, I have to wonder... Now, it, it's very obvious, because you guys told me uh, in uh, The Magician's Apprentice that he is actually playing the guitar, but is the audio that they used, is that actually from him playing the guitar? Because it's obvious, you know, he knows what he's doing playing the guitar on camera, but is that actually him... Like, recording that audio. That would be cool if it was, you know? Man. Which, and this is probably getting on a bit of a tangent. Man, I remember when I used to want to play guitar. Back when I was... I was probably in middle school, and I was like, Oh, cool guys, play guitar. And I don't think I got... I don't think I got very far with that. I had no patience to try to learn how to play the guitar. I, I think I might have tried once and then immediately gave up. Um, but that, that was the thing. That's what I thought, man. It's probably because I was watching, like, Drake and Josh, and I was like, oh, dude, Drake plays guitar, so I should play guitar. And then I just didn't. <laughs> I didn't. So, um, I do not know how to play instruments. I don't play anything. I can barely sing, honestly. I mean, I, I can sing. It's just kind of odd. 
Like I can't hit really high notes and I can't hit really low notes. We're on a tangent. Doesn't matter. Um, so yeah. Wow, I wish I had done that. I wish I had moved this over a while ago. Oh well. Um, but yeah, that was before the flood. Very, very interesting way that that turned out, you know? So, so yeah, it was, you know, I, I do feel bad for both Clara and the Doctor in this episode. Because yeah, it does, they both kind of got shit for, you know, for doing what they do, honestly, you know? Whereas, yeah, yeah it was actually, like, kind of interesting that, you know, it, in this episode, they both got crap for the whole, oh, well, how are you so casual about sacrificing people's lives? Which, normally, the doctor gets crap for that, and he did in this episode. But I like that Clara also got crap for that in this episode. Like, I, I kind of like they both... <laughs> I don't know why. I like them both getting crap for that, you know? Because, yeah, they're pulling the exact same thing. So, I did actually kind of like that. Um, so, yeah, I... I do like how this all worked out. Of course, you know, when you start off the episode... With you, when you start off the episode explaining a bootstrap paradox... When you start off the episode explaining a bootstrap paradox... And then it's like, oh, well, that that's what happened then. Like, there is a part of me that's like, oh, well, you didn't have to do that. But it also ties in because that scene, the first scene of the episode is technically the last scene, because that's the thing, is that, you know, at the end, the Doctor says, who wrote Beethoven's Fifth? And then, then, he goes on into the beginning of the episode, where, you know, he's explaining that. So, so I did like that. I did, you know, it's, and it's honestly a great way to explain a bootstrap paradox, which I guess in nine seasons, they haven't really done that, have they? I mean, I'm sure there's a case, and I'm just not thinking of, of it, where they where it was a bootstrap paradox, but, um, but yeah, I, I don't remember, and I don't think they've ever just fully explained a bootstrap paradox either. So, I really did like that. Uh, we got the revelation that the ship was a hearse, which was interesting. Okay, so, so, the Fisher King, okay, I'm trying to figure this out, so... The Fisher King was just the body there, and he was going to be buried, but he was alive. Okay. Um, he was actually alive. So I assume that the suspended animation chamber was for... Prentice. No, sorry. Just trying to start the next time. I accidentally clicked on it. That's all right. I, it's still on the next time, so I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Um, so I assume that uh, the suspended animation chamber was for Prexus because the Fisher King was not in there. So I assume it landed, Prexus got out, then the doctor came, then he came back, basically. Yeah, I, I yeah, I guess so, because there wouldn't there wouldn't have been anything else. He he came to bury him, bury the Fisher King, just on, you know, this random, you know, like he said, like a barren planet, basically, so. But, the Fisher King apparently wasn't dead, which is, they didn't explain that, really, but apparently the Fisher King wasn't dead, and he wanted to bring his armada so that, um, so that they could you know, drain the oceans and enslave the humans, you know? So, that was pretty interesting. Uh, we had the Doctor's Ghost, which was pretty cool. Which, I do like, um, the Doctor's Ghost, you know, it, it wasn't actually a ghost, it was a hologram, and that's why, you know, it showed, he showed up out of order. Which, that was also interesting where, you know, well, it was interesting that, you know, like, I don't understand, like, okay, so there was... Prexus, the first ghost, he died in 1980, and then, he died in 1980, and then, um, he died in 1980, and then he, he was the first ghost to show up, then the commander died, and then he became a ghost, then, uh, the Pritchard died, and then he became a ghost, but O'Donnell went back in time, and died, 
but she was the fourth ghost, despite the fact that chronologically she would have been the second. I don't fully understand how that works. Like, I, I have no idea, but then it's like, okay, well, they are still going in the order that the Doctor's ghost is saying, and the next voice, or the next person is Clara, and it wasn't that, well, Clara's the next one to die, it's that the Doctor specifically created this because he knew the four that had died already, which, I guess, hold up, so... Now, it, this still doesn't explain why O'Donnell's ghost waits until until now to show up, but it does explain why she's third in the order of ghosts that the Doctor says. So, and that at least explains that. Again, I, it still doesn't explain why... It still doesn't explain why she showed up after, like sometime after. That was kind of odd, but... But yeah, so that was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, and then the only reason, so the doctor listed out the four people that he knew died, and then the next one, before he said his own name, he said Clara, basically to, uh, tell his former self, hey, kick it into high gear, man. Like, you got stuff to do, man. So, that was interesting. That, that was pretty cool. Um, uh, we had the Fisher King, great design on the Fisher King, you know? That was a really, really cool design. I really enjoyed him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he was... Overall, I guess he was sort of a generic villain. Like, oh, I'm gonna burr, I'm gonna enslave the humans and burr. But the whole thing with, you know... Because he's in, he's behind the entire plot with the ghost to get the coordinates so that his armada can come. That's all pretty interesting. So I do like that. But overall, like, the... Overall, I think the coolest thing about him is just his design. His design was incredible, and the fact that it was all, you know... The fact that it was all practical as well, you know, it was all... That was a suit that some guy was wearing, you know? It wasn't just CG. Um, although, it maybe it kind of looked like maybe they CG'd the mouth a little bit, but honestly, I don't know. Like, I don't know, you could probably argue one way or another. Of course, I'm sure... I'm sure, you know, there's, like, behind the scenes or something showing if that was the case, but... I don't know, the mouth did kind of look like, maybe that's CG, but I don't know, maybe it's makeup, you know, maybe it's part of the suit. So, really, really like the Fisher King's design. Um, I kind of hope they bring back, I hope they bring it back someday, because that's just a cool design, you know? Like, bring back his species someday, so. Oh, okay. Uh, we had, okay, I wrote down O'Donnell, what an interesting girl. Um, so, she was with Unit. What all did she say with, um, what all did she say with, uh, like, you know, the things that happened? I'm gonna turn the subtitles on. Hold up. Huh, okay. So I did miss that. So, because they're referencing that, you know, the other guy threw up, um, that was pretty interesting. Now, hold on, wait a second. Hold on a second, O'Donnell. Because she says, oh, well, I doubt Rose or Martha or Amy. It's like, hello, you, you better mention Donna. You better mention best girl Donna. Oh, man. So, but that was pretty cool, mentioning... You know, because mentioning Amy is cool, but, you know, we also had that in Deep Breath where, you know, it's like... Because I like that when, like, different doctors reference different doctors' companions. Like, I do like that. So, I like bringing up uh, Rose and Martha as well. So... <laughs> That's just weird. She just dangled someone out of the window because he was annoying her. So pre Harold's accent, pre the Minister of War, pre the moon exploding, the big bat coming out. The Minister of War. Okay, so <laughs> she referenced kill the moon there. Uh the the moon exploding, the big bat coming out. 
Yeah, I assume then that's... I, I assume that's just the creature that came out of the moon. So, that was kind of... Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty funny. I didn't even put that together. But yeah, this is definitely after uh, Kill the Moon, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, she also referenced the Minister of War. Ooh. Freaking wonder what that's going to be. Ooh, we'll see. Hint, hint. Maybe that's the finale. Who knows? Should I just wear my glasses like this now? Does anyone actually wear glasses like this? Oh. <clears throat> ah. Yeah, okay. Anyway. So, O'Donnell was kind of interesting. Um, you know, yeah, being from Unit, she knows a lot about the Doctor. And I like how... You know, once the doctor sort of walked away, she got all super giddy and excited about, you know, it's bigger on the inside. It's like, all right, she's obviously one of the unit fanboys, which honestly, unit at this point kind of is the doctor's fan club, like seriously, more than even like Linda or something. So, um, so I did like that. Um, but yeah, the whole thing, <laughs> dangling a colleague out of a window in anger, that, that, that was kind of weird. And then it was like, oh, well you should stay behind and stuff. And it's like, do you guys not know me? It's like, well, I don't really, it's like, I, I guess because you know, the dangling someone in anger, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know. She probably should have stayed. I don't know. Whatever. One of them should have stayed behind. One of them. Excuse me. I don't know. But she was interesting. Again, she, she kind of got Osgood did where it's like, oh, well, she's just fucking dead. Cool. Uh, we had the flood, so the doctor was the one who caused the flood by using one of the power cells, caused the flood, killed the Fisher King, and he hid himself in the capsule. So that means the doctor is another 150 years older. So that's pretty interesting, which I guess, you know, suspended animation, you know, he probably wasn't like, you know, he probably wasn't just laying in there just, you know, twiddling his thumbs for 150 years, but technically, yeah. He is 150 years older now, uh, which is pretty cool. So, but again, anyone could have been in there because it's suspended animation. Anyone could have been in there and they wouldn't have physically aged, but, you know, chronologically aged. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. And then the reveal that it was a hologram, I did really like that. It, it very clever kind of messes with you because, yeah, because they established that last episode with... The hologram of Clara, which they used to lure them in. And then it's like, oh, well, this whole thing was a hologram that the Doctor set up. Basically to give him, in the past, information. And then he would make that hologram again. Again, you know, the bootstrap paradox, you know? So, I like that. Um, and yeah, that was kind of the last thing I wrote down was the timeline. Um, and another thing that I didn't write down was I did like at the end where the guy was like, dude, just tell her you love her D for me, please just tell her that you love her because it, someone needs, someone needs this. Someone should have told me that. So now I'm telling you. So that was pretty sweet. Um, so yeah. Um, which again, if she can read lips perfectly, like, I don't fully understand the purpose of signing. Like, like, I get it, you know, just in conversation, but it's like, yeah, if she can read lips, wait a second. If she can read lips, why does she need sign language? Like, why does he need to sign to her? I understand her signing to him, but still. So, and I also like the moment where, you know, she, she literally does pull a Toph Beifong and, you know, feels the vibration in the ground. And you even see, it looks exactly the same as it does on Avatar, where, you know, we see, you know, the outline and stuff, and then she dodges. So, that was really, really cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I had for this episode. Great episode, really enjoyed it. Good two-parter. Uh, really, really liked it, and I am curious to see where we are going next time. Maybe do another two-parter? Maybe, honestly. We've had two, we've had two two-parters right now. So, honestly, I could see us going into another one, which is interesting. Um, but yeah. That is pretty much it with all that being said. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my Doctor Who reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.